preference. I'm just going to say deposit and I have to choose the bank. I'm not going to put it into the checking account, but rather I'm going to put it into the cash clearing account and then group them together. So then we have Anderson. You can click on the invoice to link over to the invoice. This is a batch deposit, but we only have one item in it. So what's it going to do? Increase the account, the cash account, in this case, not the checking, but clearing account, other side decreasing the accounts payable and the sub ledger for accounts payable broken out by customer will also go down as well. So let's make the deposit and check it out. So we'll make the deposit and then go to the balance sheet and update it. So we have stuff that's up to date. The clearing account has now gone up. It's not yet in the checking account, but in the clearing account, the accounts receivable. If we go into it, then we can see it should be going down. Now note the accounts receivable should be a, an account that you can see exactly what has happened. It's going to go up with invoices. It's going to go down with received payments. That's all that happens with accounts receivable. The only account that has way more transaction types is the cash account because cash is the lifeblood of the company. M most other accounts, you can you can have an idea of what type of forms are going to happen. Like the, with the accounts receivable, it's going to go up with an invoice down when we get paid. Let's go to the tab to the right and I'm going to right click and duplicate it because I want to open up the sub ledger for accounts receivable just so we can see how that works accounting drop down reports and let's take a look at that uh receivable aging detail aged receivable detail i should say let's go into that one and now we can see this is updated uh let's not do the detail one i just want the summary hold on a second not the detail not the detail back to the reports uh reports is what i'm looking for por favor what I'm looking for, por favor. Let's go down here. Let's say we want the aged receivable summary. It's in the starred ones. I could just go into the star items, but there it is. And so it's after the date range. So now we've got our, our people that owe us money. Ties out to 43,207.50. That's what should be on the balance sheet, uh, which is here. In practice, we would probably be tracking this on this side, looking at the business dropdown and invoices. So the open invoices or the ones awaiting payment are the ones that, that still add up to the, the, the accounts receivable on the balance sheet, but you don't have that nice subtotal. That's why I open the reports sometimes. And then you can also see it over here in the contacts and I can go into my customers and see the people that owe us money on the customer side of things. There they are in the summary. Uh, and then I can go into Anderson here if I was contacting Anderson in general about a particular invoice and see the invoice and whether or not it's paid as indicated on the little link on the side. All right, let's do it again. Back to the first tab. We're already on the first tab and let's go to the accounting uh, drop down. Uh, wait a sec. Let's go to the business drop down and go to the invoices. And I want to go back to the uh, uh, ones awaiting payment invoices awaiting payment and let's pick up the eric music one this time so i'm going to pick up this one i'm just going to do one at a time and put it into that deposit form note that you might if you have bank feeds on you also want to think how the bank feeds will fit in you could think of a system that you wait till it clears the bank feeds and if they're clearing one at a time for like this dollar amount then you might you know come up with a system where you can tie the bank feed to this invoice possibly but that will get muddied up if you have a payment processor, for example, that has fees. So the amount doesn't tie out exactly, then you can have to record the receive payment in some way or, or have some other process that's gonna set up and or if multiple payments are gonna be linked together again. All right, so let's make the deposit. If we may deposit it and let's gonna say this is gonna happen on Jan 25, Jan 25, alrighty. And this is a deposit and we're going to put it into the clearing account. So this is going to increase the clearing account, decrease the accounts receivable, decrease the sub ledger for the customer of Eric Music. Let's deposit it. Wait till we get to the green thing and then go back to the balance sheet update. We can see the clearing account should go up cash clearing 
accounts receivable should have gone down i won't go into it again because we've seen it a couple times let's go to the aged report just to double check the aged report Thirty thousand disappears we're now at the twelve thousand seven fifty seven fifty which ties out to what's on the balance sheet twelve thousand seven fifty seven fifty go into the first tab we can also see if we go to the drop down invoice and we go to the awaiting payments now we've got these two awaiting payments, the ones that are paid over here. You can see the ones are paid or transferred over here. So you can see those two. 